Hello, welcome to lecture 11 of module 3. This is lecture number 32 of the course. In this lecture, we are going to discuss a phenomenon called normal mode splitting. This phenomenon is extremely significant because this is the definite signature of coupling between the optical oscillator and the mechanical oscillator. Then we will also discuss the physics or the principle behind how an optomechanical system can act like a transducer that means how it can transfer information from one optical mode to the mechanical mode or vice versa. So let us begin. In the last class we started our discussion by writing down the quantum Langevin equations for optomechanical system. So firstly we worked out the steady state solution for this quantum Langevin equation for various variable uh, the position variable and the momentum variable for the mechanical system and the optical mode of the cavity and the uh, steady state solution for the position variable is represented by q bar momentum by p bar and the optical mode by alpha bar then we went on to linearize these equations around the steady state value here uh, for example for the optical mode we are writing it as alpha bar plus delta a a bar and alpha delta a cap here alpha bar is uh, actually the classical you can consider it to be the classical part and delta a is the deviation from this classical one that is the quantum fluctuation similarly delta q and delta p are the corresponding quantum fluctuation for the position and the momentum variable of the mechanical oscillator putting them in the quantum Langevin equations we get the time evolution equations for the quantum fluctuation part and ignoring the nonlinear parts thereby we write down the linearized version of the quantum Langevin equation for the quantum fluctuations and here this parameter z is known as the linearized optomechanical coupling parameter in terms of creation and annihilation operator also we can do the linearization and that is exactly following the similar procedure we exclusively write the time evolution equations for the uh, annihilation operator for the optical mode and the annihilation operator for the mechanical mode and uh, this will result in a linearized optomechanical Hamiltonian here when we have written down the optomechanical linearized optomechanical Hamiltonian we have ignored the quantum noise and the damping uh, in literature or in many places as it is customary to write delta A again as A uh, this is actually now the quantum completely quantum and b cap so the linearized hamiltonian can be written in this particular form and in our treatment what we have taken is that we have in the next uh, rest of the treatment we have taken this modified detuning parameter to be simply as the detuning parameter delta because the deviation uh, from this the delta would be very small and then this is also represented in a schematic diagram which represents that we have two oscillators one is due to the optical uh, oscillator and one is due to the mechanical oscillator optical oscillator is oscillating at frequency minus delta as you can see from here and uh, from the for, and the mechanical oscillator is oscillating at frequency omega m they are coupled by this parameter z and optical uh, KVT has this uh, detuning de uh, kappa and the uh, mechanical oscillator also has a damping that is gamma m and uh, we find that when delta is uh, less than zero then uh, the, which means the laser is red detuned we can achieve the ground state cooling of the mechanical oscillator then we went on to study the quantum limits for ground state cooling of the mechanical oscillator and we uh, confine our discussion to the one phonon uh, st uh, state and the zero phonon state and we worked out the damping for the downward transition when the mechanical oscillator goes from the one phonon state to the ground state zero phonon state then the damping we have calculated using the fermi golden principle and similarly when the system mechanical oscillator goes from the uh, 
downward state that is the zero phonon state to the one phonon state this damping rate is denoted by gamma up we have calculated it in the similar way using the fermi golden rule and all these things is plotted for delta less than zero that is the uh, we are in the cooling regime uh, red detune uh, when the laser is red detune and it is evident from this plot as well that in this case the rate of downward transition is pretty high than that of the rate of upward transition so this is going to lead us to the cooling and to then we invoke the principle of detail balance basically that says that the rate of downward uh, in the steady state in the rate of downward flow must be balanced by the rate of upward flow from this we get a ratio between the upward transition and the downward transition in terms of the corresponding occupation probabilities which are again related to uh, each other by the so-called Boltzmann distribution so invoking all these things and knowing that the phone average phonon number is given by this expression we can work out a expression for the average phonon number with this relation and next what we did was to optimize it because we wanted to minimize the average phonon number because as we are interested in cooling of the mechanical oscillator and that can be done if we work in the result sideband regime and uh, also if we set the detuning parameter at the negative of the mechanical frequency then it turns out that the minimum number of phonon one can achieve would be given by this expression kappa by 4 omega m whole square and this is you can consider it as a quantum limit and what it says is that to have uh, to get into the ground state if we want to make the average number of phonon to be nearly zero so that we can attain the ground state of the mechanical oscillator the cavity decay rate has to be very very small and which in other words means that we need to have a very high uh, quality uh, optical cavity please note that in our treatment we have not considered the effect of coupling of the mechanical oscillator to the intrinsic mechanical damping and the external optical drive if these are taken into account that means taking intrinsic mechanical damping which we denote by the rate gamma m and the external optical drive external optical drive the expression for the average number of phonon would get modified and it would be given by this expression that would be n bar is equal to gamma i will define what this gamma is and n minimum n minimum which already we derived say this one let me put n b also here and this intrinsic mechanical damping gamma m and the thermal average number of thermal phonons divided by this gamma and the mechanical damping rate here this gamma is equal to the difference between the downward transition rate and the upward transition rate as uh, ground state cooling of mechanical oscillator is of tremendous significance and importance for realizing quantum mechanics in macroscopic objects numerous experimental group around the world have carried out various laser cooling experiments as you can see from this particular plot here uh, the initial and final phonon number versus the sideband resolution parameter omega m by kappa which determines the minimum phonon number is plotted and in our notation omega m is uh, represented by this symbol uh, here as you can see the blue curve shows the quantum limit uh, for the minimum achievable phonon number and one uh, group from mit they have started initially 
uh, initial phonon number around 10 to the power 10 in the logarithmic scale and they were able to suppress it to this number on the other hand another group at boulder uh, at Col university of colorado at boulder i'm talking about the last one here they have started with photon uh, phonon number around uh, 100 10 square and uh, in the logarithmic scale and they suppress it to uh, 1 in the log scale which is 10 in the linear scale so this uh, is a landmark experiment and uh, this was reported in this uh, nature physics journal actually it is nature journal not physics one so i encourage all of you to go through it so you will have an idea about the how the experiments uh, uh, were carried out uh, in this laser cooling experiment and how they were able to suppress uh, the uh, phonon number and nearly achieve the uh, ground state of the mechanical oscillator. One phenomenon well known in the context of two couple oscillator is the so called normal mode splitting. And it is an important phenomena because it is a definite signature of coupling between two oscillators so normal mode splitting is a definite signature of coupling between two oscillators now you may ask oh, some of you may ask what is a normal mode well you know that if we have a single oscillator like this let us consider a mass spring system suppose this mass m is attached to a spring of spring constant k then its natural frequency of this mass spring system is square root of k by m k is the spring constant and suppose we have another spring same identical mass and here also this is the natural frequency is given by square root of k by m however if we have two or more couple oscillators the system may have several natural or normal frequencies and uh, the general motion is a combination of vibration at all different frequencies now here if we couple this identical mass spring system by a okay i will show you if i couple them by a spring of spring constant k in that case you know that the natural frequency uh, or the normal mode frequency would be two normal mode frequencies one can have one is say omega one is equal to square root of k by m and another one would be square root of 3k by m all right now as we are having in cavity optomechanical k optomechanical system uh, two oscillators one is due to the optical oscillator and another one is the mechanical oscillator so we can expect normal mode splitting phenomena here also However, before I go on to discuss it in the case of optomechanical system, let me give you a general idea about what I mean by normal mode splitting. So what is normal mode splitting? For simplicity, let us consider two oscillator oscillator a and oscillator b and they are coupled by this coupling parameter say z and the hamiltonian of the system let me say these two oscillators are identical that means they have or degenerate uh, frequencies so they have the frequency say omega a and oscillator a is a dagger a oscillator b is represented by b dagger b these are the two harmonic oscillators and their coupling and the coupling is such that the uh, quantized exchange between the two oscillators if the quanta a is created that is at the cost of the quanta in b and so on 
and we have this process this hamiltonian can be diagonalized this can be diagonalized uh, if we take the transformation say if i write a is equal to a plus b root over 2 all these are operators and b let me write it as a minus b by square root of 2 then you can show that a a dagger is equal to b b dagger that would be equal to 1 on the other hand a and b are independent oscillators so they will not commute and if we apply this transformation the hamiltonian that we are going to have would be h cross omega a plus z a dagger a plus h cross omega a minus z b dagger b so what you see that now we are getting two independent harmonic oscillators with uh, different frequencies and the mode frequencies are here omega a plus minus z as you can see and uh, these are the normal mode frequencies these are the normal mode frequencies one is omega a plus z and the another one is omega a minus z so the frequency splitting would be observable if the splitting z is this is splitting uh, z is bigger if splitting z is bigger than the typical damping of the mode then the typical damping of the mode damping of the mode then this it would be observable then the frequency splitting frequency splitting would be observable would be observable i think this would be more clearer because now i'm going to discuss the phenomena of normal mode splitting in cavity optomechanics let us consider the linearized optomechanical hamiltonian without noise and damping so the hamiltonian is let me write it as h cross delta delta is the detuning parameter that i'm going to define again a de a decade this is the optical oscillator then we have h cross omega m b dagger b that is the mechanical oscillator and they are coupled by this coupling parameter z and we have these terms a plus a dagger into b plus b dagger here i define delta as omega o minus omega l omega 0 or omega o is the resonance frequency of the optical cavity and omega l is the laser frequency and we are going to consider that omega 0 is greater than omega l that means the laser is red detune okay now uh, let us uh, use a transformation use a transformation i want to write the hamiltonian in a convenient form so that we can diagonalize it so let us follow the procedure uh, let us do it this way so let me write the annihilation operator of the optical cavity in terms of the quadrissors so xa plus all these are operators xa plus i y a divided by square root of 2 and for the mechanical oscillator part we have xp plus i yb divided by root 2 then let me find out a dagger a b dagger b first so a dagger a if you do the uh, straight forward calculation so it would be half xa minus i y a that's the a dagger part and then we have a is xa plus i y a because these are operators so this will lead us to we'll get xa square plus 
y a square minus i y a x a plus i x a y a similarly uh, we can get b dagger b is equal to half into x uh, b square plus y b square minus i y b x b plus i x b y b and uh, a plus a dagger it would be square root of 2 into x a and b plus b dagger would be square root of 2 x b now if i as you can see this relation or this one this is commutation so if i use the relation say x a this commutation relation between x a y a and similarly between x b y b you can so that the commutation relation between x a y a would be equal to i and similarly x p y b is equal to i so if we utilize this then the hamiltonian can be rewritten and this would be h cross delta by 2 x a square plus y a square plus h cross omega m by 2 x b square plus y b square minus twice h cross z x a x b while i have written it i am assuming that delta the detuning parameter is almost equal to omega m that is the resonance frequency of the mechanical oscillator this should remind you about the degenerate case that i uh, discussed while uh, explaining what we mean by normal mode splitting uh, now if you look at this hamiltonian this should remind you about the another case that we have discussed in an earlier class about uh, harmonic oscillator coupled harmonic oscillator where we have written the hamiltonian as this suppose we have two oscillators a and b then the hamiltonian for the first oscillator has uh, this kind of a part this is the for the oscillator a and for the oscillator b this is the kinetic energy okay uh, and this is the potential energy omega m square q b square and if you remember then the coupling between them was considered as z into q a q b this particular issue i want to point out that here the coupling is uh, of the position position type and similarly if you look at it this structure is similar to this one because here also the coupling is of position position type because x a corresponds to the position and y a corresponds to the momentum of the uh, optical oscillator similarly for the mechanical oscillator so uh, the coupling is a position position type coupling now we can diagonalize this hamiltonian to diagonalize this hamiltonian let me uh, write uh, or rescale let us to rescale certain parameters rescale the operators actually what i'm going to do is the diagonalization so i take x a to be equal to x a tilde so i am not going to disturb the optical oscillator it would be remain the same but for the mechanical oscillator i take x p is equal to x p tilde square root of omega m by delta and y b is equal to y b tilde square root of delta by omega m so now if i put this in the in this expression in this hamiltonian here and then what i'm going to get this is simple algebra so let me write it so we'll have h cross delta by 2 x a tilde square plus uh, y a tilde square 
plus h cross omega m by 2 here i will have omega m by delta xp tilde square plus delta by omega m yb tilde square minus twice h cross z x a tilde into xp tilde square root of omega m by delta okay so now this hamiltonian as you can see is a hermitian hamiltonian and it can be diagonalized using a unitary transformation so we are going to apply a unitary transformation to diagonalize it unitary transformation let me say that unitary transformation operator is say, alpha beta minus beta alpha where alpha beta are considered to be real quantity with the conditions that alpha square plus beta square is equal to 1 because this is going to ensure unitarity and what i mean by transformation is that i am going from the variable say x a tilde x p tilde and that would be equal to I, I apply the unitary transformation i and i get the variable x plus and x minus similarly i have y a tilde y b tilde i apply the unitary transformation to get uh, y plus and y minus y y plus y plus and y minus okay so sorry this would be y minus now putting this transformation into the hamiltonian so actually i will encourage you to do this calculations yourself and then you can write for example let me just write x a tilde and x p tilde uh, then you have to put it x a tilde if i apply the unitary transformation i will get it as alpha x plus plus beta x minus and x p tilde is equal to minus beta x plus plus alpha x minus similarly you will get y a tilde is equal to alpha y plus plus beta y minus and y b tilde is equal to minus beta y plus plus alpha y minus and if i put all these variables uh, into this particular hamiltonian simple algebra you have to do it may appear to be tedious but actually this is very straightforward and then you will get the hamiltonian in this form it is h cross delta by 2 okay so you will have alpha x plus let me just put it in and i will explain x minus whole square plus alpha y plus beta y minus whole square uh, okay then i will have h cross delta i encourage you to do these things yourself because this is very simple i am just putting up the terms only here and i will get if i take h cross delta as common then i will get next expression would be omega m square by delta square minus beta x plus plus alpha x minus whole square plus minus beta x actually it would be y plus now we'll have y plus plus alpha y minus whole square okay and then i have minus twice h cross z square root of omega m by delta and i have this alpha x plus beta x minus into minus beta x plus plus alpha x minus 
Now this Hamiltonian would become diagonal if the coefficients of all the cross term coefficients coefficients of the cross term of the cross term x plus and x minus should vanish if let me write if coefficient of the cross term x plus x minus vanishes uh vanishes then h would become become diagonalized become diagonalized that means it will not have any off diagonal elements in the hamiltonian i am not talking about y plus y minus because if you do the calculations uh, and because of the fact that alpha square plus beta square is equal to 1 the that uh, the coefficients of that particular cross term is anyway going to vanish so now because of these conditions we have to set set the coefficient coefficient of x plus x minus to 0 this is going to give us a condition because of which the the hamiltonian would become diagonalized and if i do it and if you just look at this you have to open it up and then it is very easy to see the conditions that you are going to get is this you will get alpha beta into delta 1 minus omega m square by delta square minus 2z square root of omega m by delta alpha square minus beta square is equal to zero so this is the coefficient and this is the coefficient which i'm making it to be zero and to make my life little bit simpler let me write it in this form let me write a alpha beta is equal to b uh, into alpha square minus beta square where a is equal to 1 minus omega m square by delta square into delta and b is equal to 2z square root of omega m by delta so we have now two equation one equation is alpha square minus beta square is equal to a by b alpha beta which i am getting from this and another one is alpha square plus beta square is equal to one these two equation can be solved to get the value of alpha and beta if we do it a little algebra will lead us to this equation that is alpha to the power four minus alpha square plus b square divided by a square into four b square is equal to zero and from here we get alpha square is equal to one plus minus square root of a square divided by a square plus four b square now if i take c is equal to a divided by a square plus 4 b square square root okay then i can write alpha square is equal to 1 plus minus c by 2 and clearly from here i can write beta square is equal to 1 minus c minus plus okay so this is what i will get and also uh, from here i can have alpha beta is equal to plus minus bc divided by a and without loss of generality without loss of generality let us take 
alpha beta is equal to plus bc by a and actually this implies that i am taking alpha square is greater than beta square so using this uh, i can rewrite my hamiltonian it's very straightforward i can put the value of alpha beta and everything i will finally get my hamiltonian uh, in this form that would be h cross delta by 2 alpha square plus omega m square by delta square okay uh, it would be beta square as well here plus 4z alpha beta divided by delta square root of omega m by delta then i have here term x plus square and i have h cross delta by 2 beta square plus omega m square by delta square alpha square plus 4z alpha beta let me write it as 4z alpha beta divided by delta square root of omega m by delta x minus whole square and i have h cross delta by 2 y plus square plus y minus square now uh, what i can do is that you see i can simplify this expression further because i know the value of alpha beta now alpha square and beta square so let me simplify this this one let me write it as alpha square plus omega m square by delta square beta square plus 4 alpha beta z divided by delta square root of omega m by delta and if i put the value of alpha beta then i have 1 by delta square these are algebra and you can do it and verify it whether i am doing it correctly you will have delta square plus omega m square plus minus square root of delta square minus omega m square whole square plus 16 z square omega m delta so this is what we'll get and using this this hamiltonian i can rewrite in this form and that would be h cross delta by 2 1 by delta square omega plus whole square i will write what is omega plus square later let me first write it i will have another term 1 by delta square omega minus square x minus square and i will have you see i am not not i don't have any cross term so these are the terms i have where this omega plus as well as this omega minus this is defined as square is defined as a half of delta square plus omega m square plus minus square root of delta square minus omega m square whole square plus 16 z square omega m delta okay so this is what i will have now if i rescale further rescaling we'll get uh, let me rescale by taking h cross by delta square root x plus s x plus tilde and h cross delta square root of h cross delta x minus s x tilde minus and h cross delta square root y plus let me take it as y plus delta and h cross delta square root y minus s y minus uh, tilde then if i do it then we can write the hamiltonian in a simplified form and that would be half of omega plus square x tilde square 
plus y tilde square this is one term i have and another term i will have is omega minus square x tilde minus square plus y tilde square right this is what i will have so it is clear that the linearized optomechanical interaction let me write here the linearized optomechanical interaction optomechanical interaction leads to two normal modes leads to two normal modes which are both mixers of optical and mechanical modes it is clear because you see this frequency omega plus minus square now we have this optical frequency related to the optical delta is related to the optical oscillator and omega m is related to the mechanical oscillator so it's a mixture of both optical and mechanical modes and the normal with with normal mode frequency let me write it once again with normal mode frequencies frequencies omega plus minus square is equal to half of delta square plus omega m square plus minus square root of delta minus omega m whole square plus okay i think uh, this is delta square omega m square okay plus 16 z square omega m delta so this is what i have these normal modes which are combinations of optical and mechanical mode are frequently referred to as polar returns we can plot the mode frequencies as a function of the detuning parameter delta for some fixed mechanical frequency omega m and the linearized optomechanical coupling parameter z for example we can have a plot like this if i plot say delta in the x-axis and the mode frequencies omega plus minus in the y-axis then i will have a typical plot for say omega m is equal to one it may be one megahertz and z as 0 0.1 then we'll get a typical plot of this type we'll have say plot like this here the upper branch referred to as omega plus and the lower one corresponds to omega minus now as you can see from this plot that near delta is equal to near delta is equal to one which is equal to omega m we have we can observe avoided crossing we can observe avoided crossing right and the splitting at the crossing the splitting between the frequencies pre or the frequency splitting is proportional to the strength of the linearized optomechanical coupling parameter at crossing the frequency splitting is proportional proportional to the coupling parameter in fact this is the reason why one can observe normal mode splitting only in the strong coupling regime but recently even in the weak coupling regime normal mode splitting is observed in a cavity optomechanical system here for example in this plot one can observe avoided crossing phenomena that we have just discussed and here this plot a this plot a 
refers to the experimental one and the plot b uh, is the one given by theoretical calculations and you can see the excellent agreement between theory and experiment and this is really amazing now this plot depicts the displacement spectral noise the blue trace here refers to the uncoupled mechanical mode so this one refers to the mechanical mode in their experiment they have used a membrane a vibrating mem membrane which gives the mechanical mode and this one the red one refers to the optical mode when they are not coupled and when these two oscillators the optical one and the mechanical oscillators are coupled we get the green they get the green trace the solid line refers to this this solid one uh, line refers to the theoretical and the other the traces refers to the experimental and this particular uh, as you can see from here their appearance of two normal modes and this is what is the so-called normal mode splitting okay now finally to look into the linearized system dynamics in the absence of noise and damping let us transform the linearized optomechanical hamiltonian which we wrote as h cross delta a dagger a plus h cross omega m b dagger b minus h cross z a plus a dagger into b plus b dagger where we have taken delta is equal to omega 0 minus omega l and now this uh, hamiltonian we can transform by using this unitary transformation which i take as e to the power i delta a dagger a t e to the power i omega m b dagger b t as you know under unitary transformation the hamiltonian will transform to a new hamiltonian which we derived earlier this relation we have worked out earlier now if i put my unitary transformation to this relation then we can obtain our hamiltonian as this i am not writing h tilde so this is the what i am going to write is the transform hamiltonian that would be minus h cross z a dagger b e to the power i delta minus omega m t plus a b dagger e to the power minus i delta minus omega m t and we will have terms a b e to the power minus i delta plus omega m t and a dagger b dagger e to the power i delta plus omega m t now let us choose red detuning choosing red detuning that means the laser frequency is less than the optical frequency delta is greater than zero which implies omega l is less than omega zero omega zero is the cavity resonance frequency and if we set the detuning parameter delta is equal to omega m then you will see that this term will get cancelled it would give you one uh, and this is also going to give one but this term will oscillate at double the frequency of omega m and similarly this term so all these highly oscillating terms can be neglected so neglecting neglecting highly oscillating terms i get the hamiltonian in this form that would be minus h cross z a dagger b plus a b dagger and this is an important hamiltonian and this hamiltonian describe the quantum beam splitter this describes quantum beam splitter 
and the corresponding Heisenberg equation of motion for A and B can be very easily worked out and that would be A dot is equal to I Z B and B dot is equal to I Z A and from this coupled equation you can immediately get this differential equation for A A double dot plus Z square A is equal to 0 and you know the the general solution of this differential equation would be a of t would be equal to a cos of z t plus b sine of z into t now with the condition and obviously you will see that at time t is equal to zero we will get a and a dot time derivative of a at time t is equal to zero will give me i into z b of zero you can check it from here from the second equation from this equation we'll have in fact uh, you will get it from the first equation you will get it from this equation that a dot at t is equal to zero would be i z into b of zero and from this equation immediately you can see that this will result in z into b okay so therefore the solution i can write as a of t is equal to a of zero cos of z t plus i into b of zero sine of z t and similarly i can get the solutions for b and b of t would be equal to b of zero cos of z t plus i a of 0 sine of z t please verify that yourself now clearly at any arbitrary time the modes a and b are the mixers of their initial values which is very clear from these expressions for example at a special time and this is going to be an important case at a special time say t b s t is equal to t b s is equal to pi by 2 z you will see that at that time t b s it is equal to i b of 0 on the other hand the at that time b the value of b would be i of a 0 so this is this shows something very interesting what it shows is that the modes have exchanged their values and this feature implies that the optical information because a contains the optical information b contains the information from the mechanics so what it says is that optical information can be can be written into can be written into and read from and read from a mechanical mode from a mechanical mode so optomechanical system therefore can act like a transducer and this is or state can be transferred from one mode to the another mode and in fact this is the principle behind information storage and retrieval in optomechanical system and this theoretical prediction that i we got from the this calculation is experimentally uh, verified and realized experimentally in this very interesting work where they have used uh, silica optomechanical resonator as their opti cavity optomechanical system and they have stored optical information as mechanical excitation let me stop here for today in this lecture we discuss the phenomena of normal mode splitting in somewhat details we also learn the principle or physics behind how an cavity optomechanical system act like a transducer 
In the next lecture, we are going to discuss the phenomena of squeezing and also we'll conclude this module. So see you in the next lecture. Thank you.